Hmm. Hi, it's Dr. Monica. How are you? Can you hear me okay? Hi, can you hear me okay? Right. All right, I'm going to get started. Um, we have one participant, welcome. I'm hoping that you can hear me okay. Um, had a little bit of a technology thing right before, so I think it's all set now. Um, sharing my screen, hope you can see all this. Um, and let's jump right in. I have actually some really good info here today for this webinar. Um, gonna kind of touch on a few different things, um, but we, um, so I'm Dr. Monica Vigella. I am with Charlotte Natural Wellness. We're located off of um, Carmel Commons Boulevard, off of Johnston Road and Carmel Road um, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, our practice owner is Dr. Michelle Dillon, um, so I just kind of wanted to introduce myself. Um, so here's a little bit more about me. Um, I use mostly, I was raised using mostly natural Ayurvedic remedies. Um, you know, growing up, I, when I used to get a sore throat, my mom would make me golden milk. Um, stomach aches, we use different types of seeds like fennel and ginger um, to kind of help with that. So just growing up, I've always been more naturally minded. And um, so kind of fell upon this career and it really resonated with me and, and decided to pursue it. Um, went to Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine for my four year medical degree after bachelor's. Um, 
grew up in the Charlotte area, went to UNCC uh, for my bachelor's. And then um, my focus is really hormones, gut health, thyroid health. Um, I work a lot with women's health as well. Um, and I really like spending time educating my patient to make sure they really understand why we're doing what we're doing as far as therapies go um, and really helping them understand their own bodies um, to feel better. Um, so that's my goal and kind of why I do these webinars. I haven't done one of these in a while, but um, I just really like to spend time educating my patients. Um, we also have just a quick introduction on Dr. Michelle Dillon, our practice owner. Um, she is really, she works with um, a lot of moms. That's been her passion and helping people, um, you know, who are tired, lethargic, overwhelmed. Um, she also went to the Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. Um, so there's just a little introduction on her. All right, so let's jump right in. Um, let's talk about the immune system because we are jumping into the winter months and um, definitely some viruses, colds, flus, um, COVID, all kind of in the mix coming up here in the winter season. Um, so what is the immune system? The immune system is a network of cells that help you protect, help protect you from bacteria, chemicals, viruses, allergens. Um, your immune system makes antibodies and those antibodies can actually remember every germ it's encountered and can quickly remove it with those antibodies if it's been exposed to this germ before. Um, so chronic exposure to pathogens such as the cold or flu can lead to infections, chronic inflammation, allergies, autoimmune disease. Um, so just kind of like that, like with the flu, with the cold, these viruses change. Um, but a lot of times if you get a similar strain or a strain that you've never had before it will determine how severe your immune response and how severely you would be feeling sick. Um, and so it's very, very interesting, um, our immune system. And what really ties the immune system is our gut. So I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about gut health and our immune system in a, in a future slide. Um, but we now have learned that 70, 80% of our immune system is based in our gut. So what you eat plays a huge role in your ability to stay healthy. Trillions of bacteria reside in our gut, even more than the amount of cells we have in our bodies. There are more helpful bacteria and harmful bacteria in our gut, and we wanna keep a healthy number of the helpful bacteria. Um, so the helpful bacteria can keep the harmful bacteria at bay, they are responsible for producing certain vitamins we need to make energy. Um, and they also feed the cells in the intestinal barrier, um, which is why I look more at um, the microbiome through different types of testing that we do rather than um, jumping to like a food allergy test or something like that. Um, I would mostly focus on looking at the bacteria in our gut to really see what is causing some of the symptoms um, common symptoms that people come in with like IBS, bloating, all the way to inflammation, hormone imbalance, uh, sleep issues. This is all tied to the gut. Um, so I really, really like to spend a lot of time looking at the health and integrity of your gut um, to really get to the root cause of what's going on overall. Um, and I'm just kind of going to get the elephant in the room out of the way. Um, SARS-CoV-2, also known as COVID-19 or coronavirus. This is a new virus, which is why there isn't a lot of information available. We've only been in this officially termed pandemic for the last eight months. Um, and the medical community is studying this virus daily to figure out how it works. Um, 
this virus is probably going to mutate and have different strains, which is why we've seen some people have more severe symptoms in, than others. Um, but this is also in combination with a person's genetic makeup, their immune system, their gut health, um, and how well they eat every day, um, how well they take care of themselves every day. So there's a huge correlation with our personal health and how we respond to something like this. Um, and so what we do know, common symptoms, very similar to a cold or flu, you know, but also very different. Um, so fever, chills, cough, shortness of breath, loss of taste and smell, fatigue, muscle aches, body aches, headache, sore throat, uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, congestion, and or runny nose. Um, so I have had a few um, people that I know that have had this virus and they've had, <laughs> it's very interesting. I've had people that are having just like shortness of breath and loss of taste and smell all the way to like the full blown muscle aches, body aches, um, including shortness of breath, loss of taste and smell, fever, chills, cough. Um, so kind of like two extremes. Um, and then there is a post COVID syndrome, just like with any kind of viral exposure, some people get uh, chronic fatigue, brain fog, body aches, headaches, shortness of breath, um, some that have genetically predispositions, predispositions will in have an increased risk of clotting. Um, and there's also been reports of scarring on the lungs. Um, so just kind of knowing that there are similar associations with this virus as far as like, you know, after the virus still experiencing some symptoms. Um, Another thing to look out for is cytokine storm. This is an, an immune reaction when too many cytokines, which is produced by your immune system, are released into the bloodstream, causing inflammation, nausea, fever, chills, and severe fatigue. Um, Overstimulating the immune system can definitely lead to something like this. Um, so you just want to be very careful in what you're taking and, and really talk to your doctor about what is going to be best for you. Um, so let's jump right into some of the things that I'm really recommending people focus on um, during this time. I would say sleep is huge. Um, immune function can be affected when we don't get enough sleep. Um, our bodies actually are repairing when we're sleeping. They're repairing tissue, they're breaking down old cells to get rid of them, making new cells, making hormones, making your transmitters, everything that you need to get through the next day. Um, when we don't sleep enough, we're not giving our bodies enough time to do this, which is why the next day we wake up tired, exhausted, and then it's kind of like a buildup if this happens on a daily basis, you're basically running on empty all the time. Um, sleep can be disrupted with stress, blue light from devices, work schedule, or eating, even eating too much of a heavy meal right before bed. Um, so there's a bunch of things that you can do to kind of help get better quality of sleep. Um, I recommend drinking some teas like lavender, chamomile, passion flower, um, even lemon balm are helpful. Um, anything that's herbal that's not going to have caffeine in it is helpful. Um, avoiding blue light from devices. So I usually tell all my patients to turn off or just don't stare at a screen at least one hour before bedtime. Um, find something else to do. Um, read a book or meditate. Um, you know, just something that doesn't involve being in front of a screen. Um, now, if you must be in front of a screen due to work or whatnot, um, there are different ways to kind of get around that with, you know, the, the iPhones for sure. I know they turn, you can set your phone to turn off the blue light after a certain time. Um, there are blue light filtering glasses. Even if you're not a prescription wearer, you can still get a non-prescription form of those. Um, so there's different ways you can work around it, but ideally at least an hour before bed, I would say just no blue light exposure. Um, oh, so there's, um, and ideally you wanna shoot for seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Um, 
Where did my screen go? There we go. Sorry about that. Um, ideally, you want to get seven to nine hours of sleep per night. Um, you know, this varies per person, um, depending on just your health and your immunity and things like that, um, what is best for you. Um, okay, so stress. Have you ever become sick after a stressful de deadline or exam? I remember in medical school, even in undergrad, um, right after finals, I would always, always, always get sick. Um, and stress can weaken your immune system by increasing the hormone cortisol, putting us in fight or flight mode. So short-term stress is okay and actually healthy, but when we live in a state of constant fight or flight, we are increasing inflammation and decreasing the production of white blood cells that can fight off this infection. Um, so common stressors, of course, work anxiety, financial stress, tax relationships, poor blood sugar control, inflammation. Um, so certain ways to uh, decrease chronic stress, you know, are meditation, prayer, um, gratitude. Journaling is a great way to express gratitude. Um, breathing exercises and yoga. Just turn off the news, especially currently with all the stuff going on with the recent election and COVID and everything. Just turn it off. Um, schedule yourself a time per day if you, you know, need to get informed or whatnot, but then don't check it again over and over and over again, because it's just stressing you out. Um, and another thing I usually recommend, um, and this also helps with your circadian rhythm, your sleep cycle, is getting natural light every morning before 10 a.m. Even if it's cloudy outside, just that natural exposure to light um, really helps calm the body, it helps lower inflammation, and it really helps set that circadian rhythm, that cortisol, it lowers cortisol, which helps with the circadian rhythm. Um, so stress is a huge, 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 um, in, you know, important factor in, in immune health. Um, I, you know, I just had a recent um, friend who I was speaking with and she had expressed being very stressed out about certain things, you know, kids at home, homeschool has been really hard. Um, a few family members that just have chronic illnesses and things like that, that have been hard to kind of manage during this time and being stuck at home. And a few days later, she texted me and told me she has COVID. Um, and so, you know, I do think there's a correlation with all of this ramped up stress that she had um, and the contraction of COVID. Um, and so just really, really work on reducing the stress, excuse me, the stressors in your life. Um, and of course, hydration, you know, the human body is made up about 60% water. It facilitates our circulation, temperature, sweating, respiration, um, you know, metabolism, digestion, and absorption of food. Um, water helps to transport nutrients and oxygen to our cells. Um, it's necessary for our kidneys to remove toxins and wastes, and it helps to flush out harmful pathogens um, that can make us sick. Another thing that hydration helps with is it helps move our lymph. Um, and the lymph is what moves our immune cells. Um, so in order for our immune cells to do their work, we need enough water for them to move throughout our body and get to the places that they need to be. Um, a good rule of thumb is to try to drink half your body weight in ounces of water daily. So um, typically they recommend the average person drink about 64 ounces of water daily. As you see, oh, sorry, one second, sorry. As you see, um, this person is drinking out of a steel container. So I usually recommend drinking out of a steel container such as this, I would avoid plastic water bottles as those can definitely have association with um, BPA and other chemicals that actually can throw off your hormones called endocrine disruptors. Um, so we can definitely talk about that 
in another slide or another webinar if you know you're interested in learning more about that but ideally i would recommend kind of doing water from one of these types of bottles also exercise physical activity helps to flush out pathogens from our bodies by moving your blood and sending oxygen to your cells. So in addition with hydration, um, we need to move to actually move our blood flow. Um, and so this helps to lower stress hormones, it helps to decrease inflammation, sweating is another way to move out toxins from the body. Remember to pay attention to your body as too much exercise can have the opposite effect. And meaning what I mean by this is, um, Overexercise can make you more prone to injury. Um, I've actually had women who exercise too much that um, actually throw off their hormones, um, affect their periods, things like that. Um, so just knowing that you know physical activity can help with just movement of pathogens out of our body. Um, and like I said, I wanted to spend a lot more time talking about food and the importance of gut health and that sort of thing. So I am going to kind of get on a soapbox about this, um, clean eating, um, you know, symptoms of a poor diet can reflect in fatigue, low energy, brain fog, poor memory, hormone imbalance, insomnia, mood imbalance diabetes, and thyroid issues. So this is quite a bit, um, a variety of symptoms too. Um, so eating a balanced diet with unprocessed foods, focusing on eating whole foods like nuts, seeds, legumes, fruits, veggies, eating the rainbow, as many different colors as you can eat, tolerate, um, lean meats and fish, uh, ideally humanely raised, um, grains like rice, and then I typically say your plate should be at least half full of veggies and about a quarter of your plate should be a healthy protein and a little bit of healthy fat as well um, is very helpful in a good balanced diet. Um, the reason I focus so much on this is because um, not everyone, you know, I have patients that come in and they say, well, I don't really do well when I eat salad or kale or, um, something like that that should be healthy for you um and so what i typically say this is why i focus on gut health because in my mind when i'm thinking when someone's telling me this i'm thinking that something is off with their gut microbiome um and i really really recommend testing and looking at the the gut integrity um so really just focusing on you know, not eating inflammatory foods like chips or fast food or, you know, sodas, things like that, that can really, really weaken that gut integrity, um, allow for bad bacteria to overgrow. You really want to just eat things that you know are going to help create a better microbiome, a better flora for your gut, which will help with your overall wellness and even just overall prevention of viruses, disease, anything like that. Um, so you definitely really should focus on this um, as a huge part of your day. Like meal planning um, is super helpful because a lot of times people are like, well, I'd like to do this, but I just don't have enough time or I think of something too last minute and then I have to rush out and eat whatever I can find. And so really like maybe spending couple of hours, maybe on a Sunday or whenever to kind of prepare for your week. Um, you can even do something like just cut up veggies um, or just kind of wash veggies. And that way, like that takes away some of the things that you have to do in preparation for making a meal throughout the week. Um, it just little things that can really help overall with your gut health and just overall kind of staying in a good routine with good, good, healthy, clean eating. Um, so if you do get sick, what kind of foods should you think or focus on? Um, bone and or vegetable broth are really helpful. Um, 
mushroom teas really help with the immune system, specifically shaga and reishi. Electrolytes, coconut water is super helpful. Electrolytes actually can help um, prevent or help kind of with high fevers as well, like just kind of moving everything through your system, moving pathogens, moving the immune cells. Um, so getting electrolytes when you are sick is super, super, super helpful. Um, you know, a pinch of Celtic sea salt can also help. Um, a golden milk latte with turmeric and raw honey. This is something that um, I grew up drinking when I came down with a sore throat um, and just kind of didn't feel good overall. Um, usually my mom would put um, turmeric, a little bit of raw honey and black pepper. Black, black pepper helps with the absorption of turmeric. Um, and so just kind of making something little tea like this and, and drinking it really helped. Of course, up your veggies, lots and lots of veggies, um, all colors of veggies, um, drinking orange juice. Um, you know, if you can make it from fresh oranges, that's even better because those are high in vitamin C. Broccoli, which is rich in antioxidants and fiber, um, green tea and garlic. And of course, None of this is medical advice. Remember, always check with your doctor be before beginning a new regimen. Um, and then elimination. Um, this is one that kind of gets left off and not a lot of people talk about it. But um, even in Ayurvedic medicine, which is ancient Indian medicine, this is a huge, huge part of overall, overall wellness. If you are constipated, if you are not having a daily bowel movement, you are not healthy. Um, when you poop every day, you re remove waste from your system and you're less likely to develop food sen sensitivities and definitely keep healthy bacteria in your gut. Um, daily bowel movements also help keep the nervous system functioning and lower stress. And how is this connected? Um, so between the brain and the gut, there is a nerve called the vagus nerve, which helps communication pathways. Um, so when there's chronic stress, that vagus nerve communicates that information to your gut, which can definitely alter um, the type of flora you have, the type of bacteria you have. It affects um, the making of certain neurotransmitters like melatonin, um, serotonin, things like that. So just kind of really paying attention to stress management and elimination and gut health and clean eating is all tied in together. Um, so just eating whole unprocessed foods with enough fiber every day really helps to stay regular. Um, and then just some precautions to take, you know, of course, this is stuff that's being been, been being said for the last eight, eight months wash your hands, 20 seconds minimum, um, wear a mask. And this is not meant to be a political statement. Um, you know, there's definitely times when a mask is probably going to be necessary. And then there's other times where you don't need to wear one. Um, wear a mask in, a, in the appropriate places, like if you go out to the store. Um, but if you're outdoors and going for a walk, you may not need it unless you're in a really crowded area. Uh, this, you know, flus, viruses, things like that, they're airborne. So, you know, you want to do something to kind of protect yourself, but also protect someone else in case um, you're walking around and you don't realize you have something. Um, and then, of course, disinfect, socially distance. Um, if you kind of feel different, maybe check your temperature. Um, and strengthen your immune system with the, the tips that I have provided above and before. Um, invest in your health. This is, you know, this is for you. This is for your own quality of life and well-being. So it's important to kind of take responsibility for that and, and really take care of yourself. Um, and then this slide, I kind of wasn't sure if I was going to present it, but I decided to go ahead. Um, these are the supplements that I have found that may be helpful in immune support. Um, I know specifically vitamin D is all over social media right now. Um, everybody's talking about it. You know, vitamin D deficiency is a common deficiency I see 
among many Americans, being someone who's practiced in Phoenix, Arizona, which is a very sunny place, um, you would think that people would be fine because vitamin D is absorbed and made through sun exposure. Um, and pretty much every patient I saw there had deficiency in this vitamin. Um, and so really looking at your levels, you got to check your levels. This is a, this is a fat soluble vitamin. It's actually not even a vitamin, it's a hormone. Um, so really you have to check your levels to make sure you're not overdoing it or um, have too little of it. So it's definitely important to talk with your doctor um, before starting any kind of supplementation. Um, again, vitamin C, zinc, turmeric are helpful with immune support. Um, Andrographis, NAC glutathione really help with respiratory support. Um, probiotics, of course, gut health. Now we can do different types of testing to see what kind of probiotics might be most helpful for you, depending on what you've got going on in your flora. Um, fish oil, which is very helpful with inflammation. Um, elderberry, this one has been kind of up and down with helpful, being helpful in viruses. Um, if you already have a virus, elderberry may not be helpful. Um, it can be helpful in maybe prevention. Um, and then there's also been um, use of melatonin. Um, for people who are super sensitive to supplements and medications, um, homeopathic remedies seem to be helpful. And I've listed a few here, gelsenium, which helps with like flu-like symptoms. Belladonna helps with fever and headaches. And um, eupatorium, which help, helps when the bones feel kind of broken, like when you have a flu and you just feel like chills and that sens sensation of like your bones being broken. Now, remember, none of this is med medical advice. Um, you know, all of these things, you always have to check with your doctor before beginning any of this, any of these supplements or any supplements um, and just kind of being really good at taking care of yourself. Um, let's see, I think there's another slide. Yeah, yeah there it is. Um, so that pretty much concludes my um, webinar today. We are offering a free 15 minute phone consultation as well as um, $25 off in the next, um, if you're able to schedule um, a new patient appointment in the next day, um, next 24 hours, you can call our office at 704-543-5540 or visit our website at www.charlottenaturalwellness.com. Um, I will open the floor to questions now. Hey, Dr. Monica? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I finally figured this thing out. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is Steve uh, Fazia. Hey, um, how are you? I met you at the Microcirculation Institute. Yeah. I am sorry you didn't have more uh, participants. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we are recording this, so um, okay. we should be sending it out um, to our patients as well as probably posting it on our website. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you for doing it. It was great information. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Do you have any questions? And it's nice to speak with you after so long. Yeah, yeah it's been a while. This pandemic is just uh, crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I had one question. What is... Um, in your list of supplements, the androphagus, what, is that what it was called? Mm -hmm. it's, it's an herb. It just helps with respiratory health, immune health. Um, it's something that we sell at our office, just like an individual um, herb, herbal supplement. Okay. Um, but I found it really helpful, like with people who have like really mucusy type symptoms. Um, huh. like the stuff I, I was mucus. not familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. Is it standardized uh, guaranteed potency or just a loose herb? We use standard process, so it's it's done through them. Oh, standard process. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, I've got a a client that um 
I'd like to refer to you. She's she's got a lot of issues. She started with a functional uh, medicine doc, but that was out of state, mm -hmm. and she got a a little bit into the process, and it just got to be so expensive. She said that she just discontinued it, mm. and I said, uh, you know, Manuela, you've you've got to get somebody local that can just sit down with you, and you know, just figure out what's going on. Yeah. You, know, you can't, do, you, you just don't do things like that. I don't think long distance. It's tough. Um, yeah. <laughs> I do have some long distance patients, but um, it, it just, it depends on the, you know, the patient and how often they're able to do visits and things like that too. So. Okay. Yeah. So would I just have her call your, call your office there? To schedule a consultation and she's mm -hmm. got some sleep issues and um, environmental sensitivity yeah just um, yeah she some, among other things yeah she can give us a call at the phone number or um, even she can schedule the consultation online as well so if that's easier for her like if she's got a busy work schedule or something like that and can't get on the phone. Yeah, it's pretty busy. She's got yeah. a pretty busy schedule. So yeah, that might work out well for her. I'll let her know today. Okay, yeah, thank you. And her name is uh, Man Manuela. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure the last name. That's um, okay, yeah. Yeah, just let her know that um, there's a link on our website to be able to schedule. Oh, okay. Well, now, yeah. now you're not showing the site on your screen. I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? You're not showing the site on the screen. Go, give me your website. Um, www.charlottenaturalwellness.com. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry about I meant to write that in. <laughs> okay. I will have her call you and uh, I enjoyed the, uh, the presentation. Thank you. Um, and side note, was that really loud? I think people need to. Be, no, no. It was. Did you say it was? Was it loud? Well, did you hear the dog start barking? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that was loud. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh no, that was fine. I, I thought that was. Uh, yeah. A good good re comic relief there for a moment. <laughs> oh man, I had to like mute it right away, and I was like, I hope it worked because I was screaming at him. <laughs> yeah, it go, goes with the territory with these uh, virtual uh, Zoom things going on now so much these days. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> when, when did you finish at uh, UNCC? I graduated from there in 2007. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I have a BS in biology there from the 70s, show oh. my age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went there back in the 70s when there was no, it was like four dorms in a field. It's yeah. like a, it's like a city out there now. Oh, yeah. I haven't really been out there since I've been back to explore, but um, mm -hmm. I've heard that it's, oh, it's really incredible. The it's incredible. I mean, yeah. it was, it was, um, you know, seven or eight miles from the campus just to go get a fast food. Yeah, yeah, so I remember. isolated when I went, but now it's just everything's right there with University mm -hmm. City. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. Okay, well, I'll uh, see if I can get Manuela to call you. And uh, thank you very much. Sure, sure. I'm glad it was helpful. Yes, it was. Thank you. And uh, thanks again. And I'll uh, I'll call her now. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Monica. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.